In this tutorial we're going to look at how we can create a scoring system. Also put a scoreboard on our screen. Detect collisions between the FPS controller and objects such as this sphere and assign different point values to those. And when we do do a collision we can also remove the children or the spheres from the screen and have different point values. So in this case the red ones are 100 and the pink ones are 200 and as we go we destroy the objects. Now if you'd like to know about how to put the FPS controller into your project I'll put a comment below with a link to the tutorial on that. If you'd like to know how to make a kill floor so when you fall off you respawn onto your stage again I'll also put a link to a kill floor tutorial for you as well. So I hope you find this tutorial useful. If you do give it a like, subscribe and let's get underway with a blank project. Now the first thing we're going to do in our project is we're going to head up to edit. We're going to head down to project settings and we're going to click on physics and make sure that the auto sync transforms is ticked. This is very important so the FPS controller is able to detect collisions. And then we're going to close this. Now I've already imported the standard assets from Unity but if you need to you need to head up to Windows down to Package Manager and download the standard assets for Unity. This is out of date and I do have a tutorial on how to fix the scripts so it actually runs for you. Then you're able to import this into your project. So if you need that please pause, have a look in the comments and go off and do that tutorial first. Once that's completed the first thing we're going to do is right mouse click and we're going to create a floor. Now this is going to be a cube and like usual I like to use 20, 1 and 20. Now that will give us a basic floor. I'm also going to remove the camera from this project. Because I'm going to use the FPS controller it's going to have its own camera. So I'm going to head down to standard assets, I'm going to go into characters, into first person, prefabs and drag the FPS controller out and drop it on stage. I'm just going to raise him up there and then when you hit play you should have the FPS controller running around. Now remember if you get errors at this point of time have a look at that tutorial on how to use this package. Now once you've done that I'm going to head up to assets and I'm going to make a folder called materials. And in this folder I'm going to place a new material. I'm going to create a material and I'm just going to turn the floor green or something like that just to make it look a little nicer. So I'm just going to select a green, a little darker green and then I'm just going to drag and drop that down so it looks like grass and put that in the folder. So when my FPS controller is running around now it just looks a little bit nicer to the eye. Okay let's create a scoreboard. Well what I need to do for that is create a script. So I'm going to create a folder and call that scripts And inside scripts, I'm then going to create a new C sharp script, and it's going to have the name of scoreboard. And then I'm going to double click scoreboard. So once scoreboard opens up, you've got to make sure that the file name up here is the same that is here in the class, otherwise, it won't know the class. And I'm going to remove the update function and also the start function as well. I'm just going to delete those. Just leaving me with the class scoreboard. And I'm going to create my own public variable. Now a public variable will allow other scripts to see this variable. And once again it's going to be a static variable and it's going to be an integer and it's just going to be called score. And I'm going to set its default value to zero. So therefore other scripts will be able to talk to this variable called score. The next thing I want to do is create the actual screen, the scoreboard. So I'm going to create a function for that. So it's void. And then I'm going to work on the onGUI function. Now in here I'm going to create new GUI, graphical user interface. And I'm looking at a box for that. Then I can actually set a new rectangle. And I can set its parameters. So 100 100 which is XY position then I can set its size so I'm going to have a length of 200 with a height of 100. That'll do the properties of the rectangle. Then what I would like to do is put some text inside 
that rectangle. So I'm going to create a score. So score and an equal sign. Now you notice the space before and after. That way there's some padding. And I'm just going to put a space there just to be nice. Um, and then I'm going to add the score to it. So I want it to show the score equals and then whatever the total is at the moment. So whatever this score is here. So if I wanted to, I could call this one total score. So let's go do that. That'll make it a little bit easier. So total score. So in here, I want to have total score and I want to turn this to a string. Because it's an integer here and this is string or text, I need to make sure that total score at the moment, which is an integer, is converted to a string. So we just use the function to string. And make sure you place two brackets on the end of that and a semicolon to end the statement line. So we've set the size of the rectangle, it's x, y position and the size. Then we've actually put some text in there. So I'll put the word score equals and then total score. And that is the total score is our variable here. And that gets converted to a string. So it puts a nice string inside the rectangle. So let's command S that and head back to our project. Now to use that script, we've actually got to add a blank object to our stage. But first of all, I'm going to change cube here to be floor. I like to know what the objects are, not just random things. So I'm just going to come in and go um, create empty. So it creates an empty game object. I'm just going to move it out of the way of where I am at the moment. And then I'm going to add that script to that object. So I'm just dragging it across and letting it go in the inspector. I could add it to game object or to um, the game object itself on the stage. If you need to, I'll put a link in the comments below to how to work with scripts. You must make sure there's no errors in it, otherwise it won't attach to objects. Now once that's done, we can test that by pushing play. Now you can see I've got a scoreboard. Nothing to collide with yet, but as I move around, the scoreboard goes with me. Remember, if you find this tutorial useful, give it a like and subscribe to my channel. So now once that's done, we can now put some objects on the stage to collide with. So let's make a sphere and we'll call this one um, sphere 100 points. So we'll call this one sphere 100 points. And I'm just gonna move this up so we can see it and move it away from my FPS controller. So let's have a look that we can see that sphere. There it is. Okay, I'm gonna make another one as well. So I'm just gonna leave the runtime. Right mouse click and duplicate. But this one is gonna be a 200 point sphere. So it's gonna be sphere 200 points. Just so you get an idea. Now at the moment, they're on top of each other and they look exactly the same. So let's make some materials for those. So right mouse click, create material. Just quickly go and pick a color. So I'm going to have a red one. Okay. So the 100 point one can be red. And then I'm going to create another material. So let's change the name of this material to 100 points. Let's make another one for 200 points. And we'll make the 200 point one that pink color we were talking about before. So we'll head around here, head across, and we'll make that one pink. Um, we'll change the green to floor, so we know it's the floor color. So there's our materials. Let's have a quick look at this, see that it looks nice. There we go. All right, but as we run forward at the moment, nothing happens to the balls. Not much at all. So we need to put some properties onto our objects before we start coding. So the next thing we need to do is check the properties of the sphere are correct. For a collision to be detected, we need to make sure there is a collider on the sphere. So I'm just gonna select the 100 point sphere and make sure there's a collider on it. Now you notice that there is a little green line around it. That's its shield or collider detection. If I change that to 0.6 rather than 0.5, it will make it bigger and you can see it floating around the ball. This is sometimes a lot easier to use because it will allow the ball to collide with the FPS controller. We also need to add a rigid body. 
Now with a rigid body, we can check that it's got a discrete collision or you can have it continuous. I only use discrete at the moment rather than having it look for it non-stop. Also, if you toggle open constraints, you can actually fix the X, Y, Z so the ball will not move if you collide with it and it's not detected. We also need to do the same thing on the 200 point sphere. So we need to make sure that this also has its collider. If we want to increase it, we can do that as well, just so you see it. Um, also, we need to make sure the rigid body is on here as well. And I'm going to lock this one into position with the X, Y, Z, and we're still going to leave it as discrete. The last thing we need to do is on our FPS controller, you'll notice as we go through, it has a rigid body, but it doesn't actually have a collider. So we need to go in here and place a collider on it. There are box colliders, capsule colliders, and also sphere colliders. So I'm just going to add a capsule collider to my FPS controller. And once again, you can increase the radius of it, six, to make it a little bit bigger. Or even again, we can go to seven. And we can increase its height to like 1.5. So you can see that the collider is now sticking outside. Now this should allow the two objects to collide and be detected. Now what we need to do is write some code for this. So let's head back to our scripts and we're gonna right mouse click and we're gonna create, we're gonna create a C-sharp script and we're gonna call this one here sphere 100 points. Now it's important that you don't start with numbers at the front, otherwise it will cause you an error. Now what we'd like to do is put the script onto this sphere. So it's sit sitting there listening for what hits the sphere individually, rather than the FPS controller going, what did I collide with? Because as we walk along, each step will be a collision. So we're gonna open this up into our Mono developer, or in my case, Visual Studio. I'm just going to remove this block of code once more here we, as we don't need this start and the update. And we're going to create a new function called void and it's going to be an on collision. So we want to use the void on collision enter and you notice it automatically puts in collision and collision. So when we collide with something or something collides with this object, it will collect all the information into collision. And therefore we can actually test, we can go, well, if the collision dot transform dot name equal equals to the FPS controller. Then we want to do something. What do we want to do? We want to open brace and close a brace. Well, we want to just put out a message into our console. So we're just going to go debug dot log and we just want to basically go hit the sphere. So we just want to know that we hit that sphere. That's all we want to know at the moment. So have we hit the right thing? Now you need to make sure the FPS controller is the exact name of what's colliding with it. So in this case here, FPS controller. So you can copy this and paste it back in your script. Here. That way you won't have any errors. And the debug log is gonna appear in our console here. So let's have a look and see if the collision's working. So I've hit the ground, I'm walking forward. And as you can see, it hasn't worked yet. So let's go back and just check that I've attached the script to the ball. So I'm just clicking on project, select the 100 point sphere just checking through. Nope, I haven't attached it yet. So it's a good idea to actually drag that across and attach it to the object. So now the sphere is listening for the collision. So after we've added the script, let's just go back and check it. Make sure there's no spaces that the FPS controller is all in quotes. That looks correct now. We've associated that with the script. Um, we'll check our FPS controller. It has a capsule collider, it's 0.7 and 2. You can see the radius there. And on our sphere, we have the 
screw it, the rigid body and the collider. So let's run it now. I'm just going to push escape, turn on our console and then click and run into, yep, and it's working now. So you can see the debug coming out of there quite all right. Okay, so let's adjust it now so we get a score. Let's head back to our code. Now to get a score, we know that this has worked because it's debugged and told us we're in this section inside the if statement. So what we want to do now is talk to the scoreboard script and we want to update the total score. So to do that, we've got to go scoreboard, which is the name of that script. And then we want to talk to its scoreboard. So that was total score. And then what we want to do is add 100 points to it. So the plus equal means whatever total score is, add 100 to it and save that. So at the moment it starts at zero, run into the ball, it should turn to 100. And then this script will display the total points, which is 100 on the update. So let's see if that's working. So I'm just going to save it, head back in and hit play. So on the detection of the collision now, we should see a score change. Watching the scoreboard. There you go, it's 100. If I run into it again, it's 200. Keep running into it, 300, 400, etc. Now, if I'd like to make it disappear after I run into it, when I go back into my script, I can then get rid of it by using the command destroy. And then I can actually say what I want to destroy. In this case, it's the game object, which is itself. So it basically says, you know, destroy me. But remember, you've got to update the score before you destroy yourself. So let's run this now. So when I run this program, we should see after we collide with the ball, the red ball disappear and the update to 100. There we go. Now, if we want to touch the pink ball and get um, 200, what we need to do is duplicate the script. Now to do that, I need to actually create a new script. And I'm just going to call this one Sphere 200. And then I'm going to open Sphere 200 in my editor. So I'm using Visual Studio. I'm just going to delete the contents once more. Now, as you see across the top here, I've got the different programs. Here's the script for 100. So I'm just going to copy that because it's all the same commands except for a minor change. So now I'm just going to paste that and actually convert this to 200. And we are done. So I'm just going to save this head back to my program. The only thing I need to do is associate that with the pink ball. So I highlight that, bring it across and put it into the hierarchy. Let it go. Now when the program runs, if I touch the pink ball, I should get 200 points and it disappear. There we go. And when I touch the red ball, I get 100 points and it disappears. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you want to add more balls to the stage, rather than redoing all those processes, all I need to do is go like copy and paste, and then move the new instance somewhere else, as you can see here. Otherwise, I can keep pasting them and moving them. Or if I want to copy and paste the pink ones, I can do so as well. And when the program runs this time, I can collect them and get multiple scores. So you can see them all disappearing as my score increases. Alright, hit like, subscribe, and I wish you all the best in your game development.